There were days Shiro was absent from school. I tried to find out what was wrong, but I could not really get through to her. This is the story of a young girl whose life took a turn due to unsupervised use of social media. One thing I noticed about Shiro in Form 1 first term was that she was very active in class. She always answered questions even if she was not very sure of the answer. And whenever she had something she did not understand, she always asked for clarification. During the April holiday, Shiro's parents bought her first phone. Their intentions were pure but they did not understand that good intentions do not always make good consequences. We had been having issues with hiring and firing of house helps. So when Shiro joined Form 1 and we saw that she had become responsible, we then got rid of the house help. We then bought her a phone to keep the line of communication open while we were away at work. Shiro, chakula iko tayari. Shiro. Shiro. Nasiwendi umwite. Na huyu mtoto. For Shiro, it felt good being free for a change. Free to make the decisions she always wanted, to be the popular one and to fit in. Once she saw Damien, she was smitten. She wanted to talk to him forever and they exchanged numbers. Little did she know Damien's real character. Good morning, class. Good morning, sir. I hope you enjoyed your holiday. Welcome back to school. I also hope that you finished your holiday assignment. Yes. I know by the mention of the word stress, some of you are beginning to imagine that you are thinking about a situation that is so difficult. Pulling is a decision, I will define that kind of way. I'm only trying to care for your life. Shiro became a master at keeping herself occupied. From the time school is over, all the way to her bedtime. This slowly started becoming a major issue and she started losing focus in class. I tried talking to her, but she didn't listen to anything I said. She started lagging behind in her homework, her notes. She forgot herself. She even forgot who she was to become.
I noticed her focus in class was getting worse by the day. I called her to the office, but she told me she had girl problems. Being a male teacher, I couldn't prod any further. I then sent her to the school nurse. The symptoms that she wrote described to me showed me that she had ulcers, which she previously had. I had no reason of doubting her, so I gave her the red prescription. Little did I know that she was lying to me. Shiro was desperate to fit in with the group which consisted of high school children and young college and campus students. That's why when the topic of sexual activities came up, she had to pretend to be comfortable with the topic. We didn't have any information of a photo shoot happening because once the student gets out of the gate, the responsibility of the teacher stops and it now becomes the responsibility of the parent to take charge of the child. Don't walk out on me. Shiro. Shiro. Shiro! She constantly began coming home late. We tried to keep it under control, but uh, she started withdrawing. I consulted other parents but they told me to relax because it was no more adolescent behavior. So immediately when the schools were opened, Shiro got very, very sick. I did basic tests on her and gave her medicine. But she kept coming back again and again. So I sent her home several times for further tests. But none of these tests were conclusive. Present. Present. Present teacher. Lisa Nyamura. Present. Margaret Mutio. Margaret Mutio. Irene Kumbuka, where is your desk mate? She, she wasn't feeling well. She was sent home again. Okay. Damaris Wanjiro. After a while, Shiro started getting worried. She consulted her new group of friends who advised her to visit a gynecologist. Angela, right? Your test results are back. And I'm afraid I found you positive with herpes. How? But I'm still a virgin. Okay. Being a virgin does not necessarily mean you cannot contact herpes. I mean, if you have been fooling around with someone having the disease, you can easily acquire it. 
see not all STIs are acquired by sexual activity. When she came to me, I immediately recognized a troubled child. I prescribed for her medicine, but she couldn't afford them. She actually promised to come back, but she never did. I tried to contact her, but I soon realized she had left me fake details. Hello, Damien. Damien, we need to talk. Damien, the doctor found me with happy. Damien, you need to get checked. If for the same disease I now have, I didn't. I mean, I've not been with anyone else. Hello? Damien? Damien, hello? This was the worst scenario Shiro could ever find herself in. Her boyfriend Damien had turned his back on her and the drugs to reduce the symptoms were very expensive. She had no plans to share this information with anyone. Unfortunately, the news found itself on social media through Damien and spread like wildfire. Consequently, Shiro fell into depression. During her Form 3, she tried her best to get back to her books and recover the time she had wasted, but she kept getting sick. The rumors became louder and louder. No one wanted to listen to her side of the story. great sadness that you are gathered here today to mourn our schoolmate and friend Margaret Mushiru. We all remember her activeness but she got lost along the way. What happened to her can happen to any one of us. That's why we should remember that social media was not created for us to compete on who's prettier, smarter or cooler. There are people who have used social media as a tool of change in their society. Let's try and emulate them. Remember to check up on your friends. They might be in need of your help. And also, let's not bow down to peer pressure. What happened to Shiro is so sad. It is a definite instance of cyberbullying, which came back to school and became a form of silent bullying. As teachers, we are very committed to make sure that we do away with such instances much as we cannot control the use of internet, but we can at least educate these children as far as cyberbullying is concerned to let them know of the dangers involved. We also wish that the gap between the parents and the teachers is bridged because the teacher is the one who has the child most of the time, three quarters of the year, and the parent has the child one quarter of the year. And therefore, if there is a direct communication between the two, then such instances will be avoided 
and instances of depression be arrested in due time. We are going to do our best to spread this message far and wide to make sure that no other death will be witnessed as a result of cyberbullying.